Welcome to another core JavaScript programming exercise. In this easy but empowering tutorial, you will learn some awesome visual effects, important JavaScript timing mechanics, working with arrays, conditional statements, event handling, and core JavaScript syntax that will enable you to earn up to $4 billion million per hour. The first thing we'll do is take a look at the finished product of what you'll be learning how to do, which is animating typing text with rich content or HTML content. That way you can have line breaks or any other HTML structuring mechanics that you want in there. So let's refresh. So as you can see, it animates or simulates a typing effect, which is what I believe they're using in a lot of artificial intelligence chatbots. Because what I believe they're doing is all of the information is readily at hand almost instantly with an AI chatbot. But what the creators of the chatbots do is they'll stagger out and make a typing effect for the chatbot. Or you can also have it on your home page to draw the eye to certain slogans or sections. Because when things are animated, it draws the eye, the user's eye, to that. So there's a whole lot of different ways you could use something like this. Now, many years ago, I did a JavaScript typing text animation tutorial, but there were no line breaks or any rich content within the string data or array data. And a friend recently asked me if I can create a new tutorial for this that shows how to have line breaks as well as special characters and rich content in HTML. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to begin with the bare bones of an example document. And if you don't feel like coding along to the video, I'll have this code available at my website, adamcorey.com. Within the next few weeks or days, depending on how long it takes me to change the business model there. All right, so the first thing we'll do is in the style element, we're going to put in some styling for the body element, which is down here. And we're just going to make the background almost black, very dark color. And then we're going to pop in a div with an ID of div one. And that's the element that we're going to be typing the text into. The typing animation will be rendered into that div. And here's the styling for that div. First thing we do is set the font size, the font family, and the color of the font. And then what I did was I just used CSS to put a golden glow. So this color right here is a gold. I'll show you with my editor, that color right there. And there's three layers of that golden glow to give it a nice, deep, rich glow. And you can also make the glow on your text pulsate or flicker using a keyframes animation to adjust the level of glow or the glow setting in that keyframes animation. And that's all done through CSS. I've got tutorials for keyframes animations. All right, so now that we have our element in the document and all the styling it needs, we can put our script into place. So the first thing we'll do is set up a constant for a my string variable equal to, and you can put this in single quotes or double quotes. But if you want to use single quotes or double quotes within your text that's to be typed, you'd have to escape any double quotes that are in a string that's encapsulated by double quotes. So if I wanted double quotes within this double quote encapsulated string, I would have to do something like this, backslash double quote, and then it will render instead of breaking my string. And the same for single quotes. If this was to be single quotes, and I wanted a single quote to render in my typing text animation, I would backslash single quote. That way it will escape the single quote and not break my string. All right, so let's get back to a double quote encapsulated string and let's type in, this is line one, period. Then for the line break, what I'm gonna do is set up a line break entity backslash n then for my next line hi comma i'm single quote there you see line two and the reason why this single quote 
won't break my string is because it's encapsulated in double quotes right there and right there so I can just type in a single quote and it will render as a character in the typing text but like I said if this was single quote encapsulation I would also have to put a backslash here to escape that single quote then to render another line break backslash n and then I type in welcome to line 3 and that's it for now for my string now on the very next line we're going to set up another constant we'll name that variable my array that's going to be equal to my string dot split method now in the parameter for the split method I'm going to put in two double quotes there which is telling my array to be made up of everything in the string each character will be an element in the array and you can put different things in there like a space so if you wanted your string split by space then this would be an element is would be an element line would be an element indexed in the array so if we put no spaces there and two double quotes every single character including the spaces will be an element indexed in my array so basically all it does is it splits this string down to its single characters now in the next line we're going to create a couple of more variables my interval which will be for our set interval method that we're going to establish pretty soon and then another variable named char short for character and that will represent each character as the array gets shifted within our function now in the very next line under that we're going to set up an event listener for the window load event and then we have an anonymous fat arrow function so when all the elements and the document is loaded then we can script against everything in the document like all these html elements down here then and only then when the document is loaded we're going to make some things execute now you can choose to have it start typing immediately if you start your set interval running inside the load event but what i'm going to do is show you how to have a little bit more control over when the typing text animation begins because you might want to wait a second or two before the typing text animation begins so i'll show you how to do that real quick we set up a set timeout method and this is one of the timing mechanisms in javascript so set timeout only runs one time at the amount of milliseconds that you set it to execute at so all the code here this code won't run or execute until two seconds have gone by and you can set that to 20 seconds 10 seconds whatever you like so when those two seconds go by then we use our my interval variable to run the set interval method to run a function that we're going to write in just a second called typing text and that's going to run at the interval of 150 milliseconds so every 150 milliseconds a character from this string is going to be typed into our div element down here that's how we're going to set it up and you can obviously change that timing and interval to whatever you want however fast you want the typing to occur so right above our event listener we're going to pop in that function right now and i'll explain it to you line by line and there's not much going on it's pretty simple so here we are function typing text now the first thing we do inside of that function is we set up a conditional that has if and else. So the if condition is if my array dot length is greater than zero, meaning if there's still characters left in the array, we want to execute all the code here. If not, if the array length reaches zero, that means there's no more characters in it to be typed out, then we run this code here. And what this code does is it clears the interval to make the animation stop running and then we return false which makes this whole function stop running at this point so now let's discuss the code inside of the if condition because this is where all the magic happens so we take our char which is our character variable and we make that equal to my array dot shift method and what the shift method does is it plucks the first element out of an array so basically when this function runs the first time this capital T will be plucked out and gone then the next time it runs this lowercase h will be plucked out and gone 
and then we can use it when it's plucked out. Now, if you just had a string with no line breaks that you want to separate into individual lines, you wouldn't need this if else condition statement here. You can just run this line of code, div1.innerHTML plus equals the char, the character that you want to insert in. And plus equals is syntax for concatenating to an existing string or HTML inner HTML data, it just adds to it instead of replacing it. If you had just equals there, you would replace each character each time with the next character. So you plus equal to make sure it's compounding and adding to it the inner HTML. So this if else condition statement is set up here to say if the character coming through being plucked out by the shift method is equal to the line break, the backslash n, and sometimes carriage returns are backslash r, and I might discuss that in just a second. But normally it's backslash n for a line break in string. So if the character is line break, or honestly, whatever character you want to have there, and I'll also show how that works in a minute, you can customize it in any way. So basically, when it gets to this part of the string, the backslash n, then in the inner HTML, instead of adding a character from the shift method, we're going to add the HTML break element, which gives us a line break in the rendering. Else, if it's not the backslash n character or entity, then we're going to do the normal adding the character or letter or space, whatever's coming through the shift method. And that's what's typed into the element. So before I go discussing some other things that you can do here, Let's make sure this code works and we'll check in the console as well to make sure there's no errors or warnings behind the scenes. So let's run example one in our favorite browser. Okay, there it is, typing animation. So the code works. Let's also open up the console. Developer tools. And let's refresh run it again and the console is giving no errors and no warnings so our script is good all right now we're going to go back and play in the code a little bit more and we'll leave this just like it is and we'll reload it after we play with the code a little bit all right so i was telling you about the backslash r and you can use that if you want because that won't get recognized or printed as a character it's an entity for carriage returns, I believe. So I'll put in backslash R and then I'll type in under a line because I'm going to use that backslash R right there to render a horizontal rule. And it'd be simple to do that. I can just take this if condition where it says if char equals backslash N and I'm going to copy all that. I'm going to put it after this else, else if char equals backslash r, we're going to make this be a horizontal rule line in HTML. Then we just have to remove or put in else here for the default typing into the inner HTML. So we have if char equals backslash n, we're going to put a line break. Else if char equals backslash r, we're going to put a horizontal rule. Make sure we save that. Now when we reload this, we should see our normal three lines, and then a horizontal rule, and then some more text under the horizontal rule. There it is. There's our horizontal rule, and the words under a line. So that shows you how you can get um, rich content in there elemented content and let's try another experiment so somewhere in here let's put a let's say before the last or before the first backslash n the first line break i'm going to put in a let's see if pound works or let's not use pound let's use
the stick. Let's see what happens when we run that, if it gives us any problems first. Let's see if it just prints the stick. Okay, yeah, so the stick just gets printed. That's what I wanted. So what we can do is go into our script and type in another if condition. Let's take this else if, the whole thing, opening and curly braces, and put it right here. So else if the char is the stick symbol, then we're gonna type in, let's say, space, hello. And let's see what that does. So we should see this is line one, space, hello, replace, replacing that stick. This is line one, space, hello. So you can put in other HTML entities here. Like, uh, let's say you wanted an arrow. So what would an arrow entity be? That would be and L, so a left arrow, L-A-R-R, -R, I think, semicolon. Let's see if it puts that HTML entity for the arrow symbol there. Refresh. See if we get an arrow. Yep. So you see how that works? You can do all kind of customizing using different characters and using your condition statements. You can have all kind of different cool, rich content printed out in your typing text animation. We wanted a right arrow there. There we go. Let's have some fun and let's make a button render there. Button. Wait, button, and then the closing tag for the button, and then click me. Let's see what happens. Yep, little click me button. All right, so that should give you a good start into how to get typing text animations going with rich content, line breaks, horizontal rule, whatever you want in there. Okay, I'll talk to you guys soon. Love you. Bye.